What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and today we're going to talk about how much money do poker players really have. So before we get into talking about some more specific stuff, I want to give you an overview of poker in general. I would say that most high stakes regs that you see are generally worth about 1 to 5 million. Now that is absolutely not the case for every player. In fact, I know that there are a lot of players that are playing in some of these high rollers that don't even have a million dollars. I know when you see someone playing a 25000 a 50000 or even a $100,000 tournament, it's easy to assume that they have a lot of money. That's not always the case. Think about it like this. Let's say your net worth was 400000 but you were a great player. Well, you could make a deal with some rich people. Hey, if you put up my buy-in and give me 10% of the result, you make money, I make money, everybody wins. There were a lot of players taking advantage of this on the circuit because there are certain backing groups that will pay that markup to put you in. So that way you can free roll a five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar buy-in for yourself, your share of the action, even though you're playing stakes that are way higher. This creates a little bit of a problem in terms of sometimes you have people that are really, really broke playing big buy-ins for free. And I think some people find that to be a little bit of a problem. But that said, there's nothing wrong with it. So, how many people really have a lot of money? I think that there are not that many people with 5, 10, 15 million in poker. And when I say 5, 10, 15 million, I don't just mean have made that, I mean have that. A lot of people have made 3, 5, 10 million in poker. But the thing is, when you include stuff like expenses, gambling in other areas, uh, traveling around, taxes, all of this different stuff, what starts to happen is that money goes quickly. Also, you have the problem of buy-ins. This is one of the problems that I have with the way that Hend and Mob or GPI or the way they track winnings. They don't include your buy-in, so it's simply just your cash. Well, if you see someone's cash for 15 million, chances are they've had several million, if not more, in buy-ins. So you can't just look at the caches and be like, oh, that person cashed for 15 million, they probably have 15 million. No. First, you subtract 5 million for buy-ins, then you subtract several million for taxes, now you're down to 7 or 8 million, subtract another 1 or 2 million for expenses over the course of years, and you're down to something more reasonable for what they might have. So someone with 15 or 20 million in cashes might only have 4, 5, 6 million, and that's if they had all of themselves, which normally they do not. So as you can see, these factors really stack up and give people a much lower net worth than you might imagine. Again, I think most higher stakes pros have net worths, in, net worths in the one to five million range, but there are some people with more. If you ask me, Doug, how many people have over 10 million made totally from poker, I imagine that number is around 15 to 20 people, probably not more than 20. Because that means you have to have made 15, 20, 25 million net, and then still have over 10 million without any other problems going on in your life, bad investments, et cetera, et cetera. The number is not very large, but those people do exist. Before we jump into anything else though, I want to talk about a very popular subject that people like to talk about. Let's talk about Dan Bilzerian. How did you get all your money originally? Um, so that's another, fuck, I mean, I, um, yeah, it's like a weird thing. Um, so, I mean, uh, I didn't really talk about it or, or say anything about it. That was a great answer. What are we talking about again? There's just a lot of things in gambling that you have taken into account, you know, with the, with the money management side. Psychological of it. things. Yeah. So how did you make your money then? Playing poker. You made it all playing poker? Yeah. Sure, Dan. And I'm a fucking astronaut. But everybody just thought that I was, you know, a rich trust fund idiot. Um, and then my parents gave me all my money. Where did Dan Bolzarian get all his money. My parents gave me all my money, so... Paul Bilzerian. The tally from a court-approved SEC receiver, 3.7 million collected, but this suits for 62 million. Where's the money? Um, yeah, it's like a weird thing. Um, okay, it looks bad, but you can't believe everything you read on the internet. I mean, where was this thing written? Uh, the Wall Street Journal. But let's take this back to what this video is actually about, which is how much money our players are making. And let's start off by talking about online pros. Now, if you look at the landscape of online cash versus online tournaments, there's not really that many high stakes tournaments. Being an online tournament player means you're probably going to end up play playing in about three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in buy-ins with a lot of grinding all year. 
Remember that most tournaments online are going to be $100, $200, maybe $500, and there aren't a lot of tournaments higher at higher stakes than that. In fact, there's only five, six, seven tournaments at $10,000 or above all year, so you really can't bank on those tournaments being a significant portion of your income. Let's say that someone plays $400,000 in buy-ins in a given year with all of themselves. Now let's say that they have a pretty good ROI. ROI, of course, meaning return on investment. Let's say that they're winning in the high stakes tournament, tournament world, they're winning at around 50% ROI, which would be quite good with an average buy-in that high. That means they're only making $200,000 on average every year. This is what makes this even more sad though, is the way that they realize that average is that some years they win four, five, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000, maybe even a million, and a lot of years they win small or break even. Now the absolute top pros can do better than this. They might be able to get closer to 100% ROI or 150% ROI, particularly with some game, game selection and picking the right tournaments to play. But that said, you're really not gonna make that much more consistently online than three, four, five hundred thousand. You can make more, but not consistently. That's not really that much money in the scope of all poker players, which is why I think online tournaments are probably your worst option to try and make a lot of money in poker. Online cash game players tend to have a very wide range of income based on sites, stakes, and ability. But we can make some estimates to, to get a baseline for what players are making. Let's start off with some mid-stakes pros. Now, I don't want to talk about small stakes. I don't know enough about the rake back and stuff, which is a major part of your income. But let's take someone playing, for example, 2-5 Zoom. Let's take a solid regular, someone winning at three big blinds per 100. Now, that's not great, but it's also not bad. It's solid. I would say someone winning at three is doing a reasonable job. That equates to $15 per 100 hands. Now it's that they're quite a grinder, as you're going to have to be at these stakes. That works out to being a, to be about $150,000 if you play a million hands a year, but 80, 90K hands a month, which I think is a reasonable amount of hands for a mid-stakes grinder to be playing, as you should be playing full-time and putting in a lot more hours to try and move up in the game. If you include rake back, it looks more like 175 or 200, so around 175, 200K for good mid-stakes grinders, putting in a lot of volume sounds about right to me. It's a decent amount of money, but takes a lot of time. That's many hours a day. In fact, that works out to be about 3,000 hands a day. Maybe that's unrealistic for an amount of hands to be playing. It's kind of tough for me to say, because I remember coming up in the game, I played so many hands a day, but now it's you know a little bit tougher because games go slower, people are better. Maybe it's more reasonable to say they're making 130K a year after rake back. I'm not totally sure. Either way, you can make a good sustainable income off of being a solid mid-stakes player. As you move into high stakes, the money increases, obviously. If you look at 2550, that same million hands is now worth 1.5 million. Here's the problem, you're not gonna get a million hands. You're only gonna get to playing games when they're good, when they run, and when you can get a seat. Because of table scripting, unless you're ready to play some heads up or some three-handed, or you have the best script in the land, you're not gonna be able to get into the games. For those of you that don't know, the high stakes arena is currently plagued by seating scripts that when they detect a new player, they automatically sit you in at the table. I know Stars has made some set to try and remove these to some degree. I can't recall what they are at the moment, but they still exist and it's still a cer certainly a problem. So at the high stakes, who's really winning the money? And if we look at OTB Red Baron, who is currently the best six max player in the world, he makes good money, but it's not insane money like you might see in live poker or live tournaments. In fact, if I had to estimate what OTB's made in the last three to four years of him being at high stakes, I would estimate he's made something in the vicinity of five to 10 million, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but probably in that range. The problem with these formats are that there's not a ton of hands at the high stakes, the competition tends to be tougher, and so there's a lot less money to go around. OTB is the best player and he's probably making one and a half, two million a year. That says a lot because if he's in the game, you're gonna be losing money to him because he's the best player. So oftentimes when you see a table at high stakes and it's got OTB Red Baron and one recreational player, you've got four other regs of which one is winning, one's breaking even, and one is also losing. So really, it's tough to get by at the high stakes scene. I'm not sure what guys like Katya or Four Haley are making in those games, but it's safe to say that they're probably in the range of between zero and a million.
Although who knows really across a bunch of different sites, maybe they're making more like 1.5. The point is the top players are not actually making as much as it seems. So it's pretty fair to say that if someone came up to today's climate and they've only been playing in you know, mid stakes or high stakes for a few years, they're likely to have around 50 to 100K at mid stakes, maybe 200K at mid stakes if they're being more conservative and a net worth of something like 500K to a few million playing nosebleeds. Maybe if you're OTB or the equivalent in some other game types where you're dominating them as the best player, you can look to have more like 5, 10 million over a few years. That said, it's extremely hard to do and not many people have made that. I'm not going to look at crossbooking because I don't exactly know who crossbooks what and a lot of that's private information I can't get into. But there are some games that are crossbooked to higher stakes, making it possible to win more online. That said, those opportunities are becoming more and more rare as the ecosystem dies down a bit. So, overall, I would say online net worths vary a lot, from high stakes players that haven't won in a couple of years and are grinding on big rolls but haven't won money, to mid stakes players making reasonable money over time but spending a lot of it on their expenses and trying to live. So, all in all, online poker can definitely be a profitable way to go. You can still make hundreds of thousands of dollars, and if you're a very talented individual, you can still work your way to the top. Remember, OTB Red Baron was not playing nosebleeds four years ago. He has a thread in 2 plus 2 where he talked about playing 2-5 Zoom, and he's really come up in the last, I believe, four years. I think it was 2012 was his big year that he came to the top. So we're still probably going to see some players come to the top and rise up and make a lot of money. That said, it is going to be a lot tougher than in years past, and so I'm interested to see what the ecosystem looks like as we move on. On that note, let's jump over to the real way to make some goddamn motherfucking money, live poker. Okay, so let's talk about live tournaments. And what's good about these are that they're very easy to see the results. Whenever someone wins, you know exactly how much. It's public information for everyone to see. The problem is you don't know the buy-ins. And this is one of my biggest problems with these online sites that track the winnings. If you say, oh, this guy won $20 million, you really don't know what it cost them to get there. It might have cost them 10, 15 million, in which case, is it that impressive anymore? Sure, it's still a lot of money, but if it happened over 5, 10, 15 years, and they played a lot of high rollers, that could break down to about a million a year, or maybe even less. That's before you take into consideration the fact that they're probably selling pieces in the bigger events. If you're going to play a $100,000 tournament, and you want to have all of yourself, in order to make that reasonable, you need to have, and this is bare bones, guys, if you played a great one and you're willing to live with some serious variants in your life, you need to have five or six million dollars, but realistically, you need to have more like 10 million or more to play it in a well bankrolled manner. Almost no one has that in poker, and not many people will ever get there. So, when we look at these high stakes buy in results, most notably the one drop, right? You win the one drop, you win 15 million or whatever the number is. Very rarely does someone have more than 20, 30, 40% of themselves, and even those numbers are high. Consider having 40% of yourself in a million dollar tournament. That's $400,000 that you have to put up to play in that tournament. And realistically, to play a tournament that big, you need to have millions and millions of dollars, 20, 25 million to make that reasonable buy-in, or more. Now, a lot of people degen it up in these spots thinking, it's only once, I'll just gamble big here. And admittingly, I've gone bigger in the larger tournaments like the Aria 300K and the One Drop, etc. I've gone bigger in those spots than I have in, you know, smaller tournaments despite my bankroll being the same number. So I understand where they're coming from. But it is still totally irresponsible to take 25% of yourself in a million dollar tournament if your net worth is only a few million. That is absolute craziness. Now, some people do it and that is their own decision. They're more than welcome to do that. But the people that do take those kinds of shots consistently oftentimes end up broke. Sometimes they make it through, but usually they end up broke. Okay, so how much are live players actually making in tournaments? And it's kind of a tough question, but let's just give some rough estimates. Let's say that a tournament player ends up playing about $500,000 in live buy-ins in a year, and they end up with a pretty good ROI. Let's actually, let's say they have a great ROI of 100%. So they buy in for 500K and they cash for a million. If you're a good player and you play a lot of softer 5 and 10Ks, you can definitely achieve this. But if you start putting in 25, 50, 100Ks, you're going to fall, fall a little bit short. Your overall buy-in total will go up, but you're not going to get that ROI. But let's talk about the guy mainly playing 5Ks, 10Ks, and the occasional high roller that's good value. That player might be able to put in 500k in buy-ins in a year and get 100% ROI if they play the right fields. 
Now, that means that they have a $500,000 in, $500, in profit for the year, right? All is good. They've made 500K. Wrong. First off, you have to factor in expenses for traveling around. If you're going to get good tournaments for, the, for that range of buy-ins, 5 and 10K, you're going to have to go to 10, 15, 20 cities a year. There's not really much of a way around it. You can kill a couple of birds with one stone and go to Vegas for a few months in the summer, hit a lot of good tournaments across several different casinos, and that'll be a good chunk of it. But you're going to need to make sure to play stuff like the EPT, the WPT, all this stuff in order to maximize your, uh, the amount of money you can make. So, I think if you travel very carefully and you're particular with the way you spend money, the way you, spend money you can probably do the full tournament circuit a, a year and probably spend 80, 100, 120K. Uh, maybe people that really live bare bones can do 50 or 60K, but when you consider just the flights, like inter international flights constantly will add up to be a pretty large number. So, after travel, we're down to 400K, right? But then you're also going to have some expenses like where you're set up, at, where's your home, do you have a car, insurance, paying for, you know, all kinds of other stuff that you might need to pay for as a person in the world. So let's just say that's another $50,000 out based on other random expenses. We'll, we'll say 150 k a year just to live the life of a mid to high stakes tournament player traveling around the world. So now you have $350,000. Here's the problem with that. When you include the fact that a lot of poker players have problems with their money, they do a lot of random gambling, they bet against the house, sometimes they end up in the pit, that number can go quite quickly. So let's just focus on the actual people that, that the, really, the really well put together people that are not doing those things, they are a good player, they don't have any vices. I think it's reasonable to expect a good tournament player on the circuit to make to take home something to the tune of three, four hundred thousand dollars a year in the mid to high stakes circuit. As a quick note, if you are rich enough to be able to pay for your 100Ks and million dollar tournaments, you can make way more a year because you can really maximize on that edge. That's a lot of the people that are able to do so are not the regulars, they're businessmen that are coming into poker. So a lot of times it ends up hurting them because they have to go big in spots they have very, very low edge and or are just losing. So your bankroll definitely matters. Let's talk about when tournament players go on streaks, because this is the number one way that in tournaments people make a ton of money. When you win a big tournament, you now have a large increase in your bankroll. That can sometimes be 50 or even 100% of your roll, depending on the tournament. As you play higher stakes, it's less likely to be like that because you play with less buy-ins in high roller tournaments, but you can still add 20, 30, 40% of your roll if you win an exceptionally big high roller with a good sized piece of yourself. This means that when people start streaking tournaments together, start chaining them together for victories, they oftentimes start to go a lot bigger in subsequent tournaments, and the net result is, when they win the next one, they have a much bigger piece. So runs like the Fedor Holes run, runs like the Dan Coleman run, those types of runs end up being substantially worth more because the tournaments that they play afterwards, they end up having much more of themselves, giving themselves a lot more profit. As you can afford bigger buy-ins and you continue to win, it only makes sense, you win more money. The problem is, a lot of people in tournaments, they try to do that and then they fail because of, you know, math. So, that definitely hurts tournament players and I think that's part of the reason why some tournament players, when they are winning, they'll just put way too much money on the line in certain spots hoping it goes well because they want their run to be like those other runs that have happened before them. But all in all, that ends up hurting people more than it helps it just creates a couple of outlier cases like Holes, like Coleman, where they win a ton of money in a short period of time. Last up, I want to talk about live cash. It really is the wild, wild west. You don't know how much players won because it's not reported anywhere and they might not even report it. Also, a lot of the big games, particularly nowadays, are all private and you can only get into them if you have a connection or you're giving someone a piece or whatever. It makes the overall situation kind of bad to get in as an outsider or as a well-known good pro. The thing about these games are there are the most money you can possibly win, the highest stakes in the world. But you have to deal with potential problems. Collusion, really high rake, uh, rigged dealing, all these things, the game getting held up, all this stuff can happen in private home games at the highest level. Now there are some high stakes games at casinos, those are obviously great, but those are also really hard to get into. Now, I can't pretend to tell you that I know what anyone in poker has, 
But I do believe there are a few players that have made 10, 15, 20, or more million dollars playing live poker, and that isn't Dan Bilzerian. Who knows, maybe he's made some money there too, not sure. But there are definitely some guys that have been in Macau a lot, and in Vegas a lot, that are into those kinds of numbers. Maybe they're not, maybe they just lead on they are, you really never know. But if there's anyone that's really become loaded from playing live poker, or poker in general, it's the guys that have been around for 10 years, 15 years, and have been playing in big cash games that entire time. If we had to take a guess at those people, they would be the richest people in poker for sure. Taxes are brutal. As an American making the six, seven figure range, you can expect to pay around 42% in federal income tax plus state tax in some locations. One of the best reasons to live in Nevada is there is no state income tax, whereas if I lived in California, I'd be getting taxed an additional seven, eight, nine percent Taxes as an American absolutely clobber you. If you look at Americans and then you compare them to their European counterparts, two people that made the exact same amount of money, the European might have twice as much money or the Canadian might have twice as much money because they don't have to pay money pay taxes on the money they won. This compounds over time as you can invest that money, take bigger pieces of yourself, and what you can see is over time that can more than double or triple your net worth. It's a good estimate if you see two comparable players to assume the American has around 50% or maybe even less of the money as the people in countries that don't pay taxes. So thanks Uncle Sam, at least we have to leave the country to work, you bastard. I thought I would add a lot to the video to talk about my own personal net worth, and I kind of debated whether I should do that or not. Ultimately, I decided that I'm okay sharing that with you guys. So my net worth is somewhere between $10,000 and $100 million. Please don't share this with other people. I want to say one last thing here because it needs to be said, and I don't want people to feel that I'm misleading them. Most poker players do not win money. There is rake, and games are getting harder. For that reason, the majority of players lose, and then next up is a large segment of players that either break even or barely win. There are way more people breaking even or barely winning than there are crushing, just the way that it works. So, when I say people are making 200k a year or increasing their net worth by 100k a year, I don't mean everyone that plays tournaments is doing that, I meant the good players. There are plenty of regulars that are currently losing regs that used to be winning but poker's gotten too tough and they're not, they don't realize they're behind the curve. There's another section of people that break even but have had a couple of lucky scores and are just getting by. And then there are people that are winning small but just enough to pay the bills and nothing more than that. This also doesn't take into account all of the problems with money that poker players have, like degening it off, and then of course stuff like expenses and taxes, all of this stuff. I think it might even be fair to say that the average poker pro doesn't increase their net worth by very much every year. So when I'm giving you all these optimistic numbers, I'm saying that from a good player's perspective. I've always been around a lot of good players and I've brought a lot of people up to be, you know, to, to have done well in the game and be where they are today. So from my personal experience, the people that I've been around, I've always seen people's net worths increasing and, and growing and them getting better as players. But I also want to keep it real with you that it's tough out there and that a lot of players don't end up having that same success. Don't assume that because someone's been around the high roller circuit that they're winning money. There are a lot of guys that play high rollers, and I'm not going to say names, that are a lot more buster than people realize they're just living the lie. Well, as a high roller player, I've seen this, and a lot of them are willing to put their last dime in a 100K to try and run it up. I feel that is extremely unprofessional, and the people that do that most of the time will end up broke. So if you have to take any advice from me, play conservative, and don't be one of those losers that ends up broke. Because the thing is, as poker gets tougher, it's going to be harder and harder to build your role. So be responsible with your money, and, that, and then one day, maybe you can make it as a top player. Last, I want to warn everyone about people that are pretending to have money in order to get themselves into good situations when they're actually broke, and give you some warning signs that things, uh, things that they could be doing to try and manipulate you. Are they constantly posting money on Instagram? Have there been a series of dramatic threads on 2 plus 2 about them? Do they start playing way lower stakes out of nowhere just because they feel like it? Do they start asking the public for help all over the place even when it's totally uncalled for? And finally, do they spend all of their time coaching and promoting themselves, making videos, being on the internet? Wait, I gotta, I gotta check stars. I gotta check my balance.
I knew I shouldn't have played 501k. Why? Why did I take that shot? Deep breaths. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make a plan for this. We gotta figure this out. Oh my god. What about PayPal? Wait, what's my what's my bank balance at? There's no way. It can't be. No. No. Oh god. 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 Oh god.